Jennifer Doyle here with Inspect Point. We are at Long Island Pipe Supply in Green Island, New York. We are here at the Reliable Trailer. This has been traveling around the U.S. and will continue to travel around the U.S. Um, we were lucky to have gotten a tour from Brandon from Reliable, who you're going to hear about and just and hear from in just a, a minute. Um, but here we go. Here's the Reliable Trailer. So my name is Brandon Telford with. Reliable's Technical Services Department, and I'm a Technical Services Manager. One of my job responsibilities is to transport our valve demonstration trailer uh, to customers, contractors, and users, and give them a demonstration of our valves and our products, and uh, educate them on how these systems work. One of the products that we're gonna be releasing very shortly is called the DDV and that's this valve right here. It's a deluge valve which works on a different principle from our DDX valve which as we mentioned previously has deluge capabilities. This is a one and a half inch version of the valve and if we, un if we want to understand what is going on inside of a DDV we take a look inside. So the DDV consists of three components. We have our cover plate, we have our diaphragm, and we have our valve body. So as you can see, in comparison to something like our DDX valve, there's a lot more simplicity going on with the inside of this product. In order for a deluge valve to work off the diaphragm, we have to have water on the inside of the diaphragm that'll inflate it and keep the valve from flowing water. In order to trip the valve, we need to relieve that water pressure inside of the control chamber and allow the water to flow through the valve. In this particular installation, we have electric release trim. We have a solenoid located up here and it's tied to this alarm panel. If we activate this panel by putting it into alarm, we will open that solenoid up and we can see what happens. So the panel goes into alarm and the water begins to uh, deflate. The water begins to drain out of the control chamber, deflating the diaphragm and allowing water to flow through the valve. When we're in a, a flow condition with the DDV, one of the things we can do is turn the main control valve off to stop the flow of water. But a diaphragm-based valve naturally wants to be closed. The diaphragm is in a closed state. All you got to do is find a way to pressurize the diaphragm. So these valves have the capability to be what's called remotely reset. So by resetting alarm panels, we have the option to close down the solenoid and begin to reinflate that diaphragm. And then your water pressures begin to rise and when they equalize the valve stops. So this valve, while it can do regular deluge operations, it has the ability to be remotely reset if you purchase the right trim and have the right installation. So it can do some things that we normally could not do with our DDX valve. The DDX valve, once it trips, it latches in the open position and we lose that ability to push a button and reset the valve. One other thing to know about the DDV is that we have the ability to regulate how much pressure is relieved off the diaphragm. So there's a pilot valve located on the back of the trim there. And if we don't allow that diaphragm to fully deflate, if we keep it only open half of the way, we will lose a significant amount of pressure as we try and push water through the valve. So this valve can be a deluge valve that can reduce pressure. And that's something, again, that you can't do with our DDX technology. So it's really a, a product that we're looking forward to bring to market. And we will be able to offer this valve without the deluge capabilities and focus on simply reducing pressure with this valve. So we're real excited to get it out there and try and get uh, customers to utilize this product in different applications. This is our model EX low pressure dry pipe valve and it works off of a mechanical latch principle. And that means that we have a push rod located in the side chamber here that holds the valve shut. And we can relieve the air pressure inside the pipe like when a sprinkler head opens up, which will open up a pneumatic actuator on the side here. And it allows the water pressure to drain off of our push rod and allows the valve to then trip when the push rod retracts. And we can demonstrate that by letting the air out. We'll do that over here. This inspector's test is located at the most remote point. Uh, 
but the trailer is pretty small. As you'll see, we let the air out of the system and our valve did trip. Um, we can reset the valve by first closing our main control valve. Next we'll open our main drain. So we get that to drain down. We open this valve in the front here. It's a manual release valve, ensuring that we don't have any water pressure on the back of that push rod. And we can externally reset this valve on the back side. There's a knob that allows us to push it in and rotate, and that will allow that clapper to fall back in the closed position. And when the valve trips, water is able to go into this side trim here, and it will get stuck in between a check valve and a ball drip valve. That's why your flow switch is in the activated condition here. The red light indicates that. And we can push on this ball drip and it'll clear the pressure out of there, allowing you to reset your alarm panel and stop the flow alarm from coming in. We will need to focus on adding air into this system to reset it. I can do that by opening my fast fill line on my air maintenance device down here. And I'll add some air and I will get my low air light to go off. What I've done is I've pressurized my sprinkler piping, but more importantly I've pressurized our pneumatic air chamber on the side here. And I can focus on introducing water into the pushrod chamber and pushing that pushrod into the latch of the clapper and holding the valve shut. Now the way I do that is I first close my main drain and I open it approximately one turn. And now I will open up my main control valve. And what I want to do here is just flow a little bit of water and that water will go right into the drain which is cracked in the open position. But in order to prime this push rod priming line chamber here, I need to throttle my drain and force that water to go through this braided piping right here into the push rod chamber and then it will come out the front through this plastic hose. So let's close that drain a little bit and we can watch this plastic tube right here. And we can see some water flow right there. And that's good because we've actually gotten rid of all the air on the back side of that push rod. And it's important to note that the drain is still in the cracked position because if you close this all the way, you will just pressurize this clapper inside of here and the valve will pop open. So before you close the drain, you would like to close the manual release valve. When you resume closing the drain, you will see the water pressure gauge begin to rise. And when that water pressure gauge rises, that will tell you that the push rod is now holding the valve shut. So you've essentially reset the valve. The last thing to do would be to open up your main control valve. So this is our Model EX low pressure dry plate valve. And one of the things to point out about this particular valve uh, installation right here is that this incorporates new trim which was just introduced approximately three weeks ago and one of the biggest things which field personnel will really appreciate is this closed drain manifold in the back here this stainless steel manifold where all these plastic tubes are at previously these plastic tubes went into a plastic fill cup that had the um, had the potential to have the the plastic tubes discharge water and spill. So the closed drain system now keeps all that water inside the drain, doesn't make a mess inside the room that this product is installed. One of the other big changes to this product was the flow switch um, installation on the side of the valve. We have this position of this flow switch now in compliance with NFPA 72, the 2010 edition. Um, that particular alarm standard would like to see these flow switches installed directly to the valve and not having any type of valve isolate them. So this ball valve is now, when you shut it, not going to impact the operation of this flow switch. So that's pretty important. For this trailer we have tried to encapsulate everything that we can encounter in the field, at least in some way, shape, or form. The first thing to point out is we have a wet riser in the back here 
that incorporates one of our commercial riser manifolds and um, just basically a simple manifold with wet system technology and we do have dry system valves on board here as well they're uh, actually the back side of them but we have our model D dry plate valve it's a differential style dry plate valve introduced quite a while ago and uh, one of our newer dry pipe valves here is our model EX. It's a low pressure um, mechanically latched dry pipe valve and we also have a full complement of air supply devices as well on board here. We have air compressor technology such as this unit right here which is a tank mounted style. We also um, do have on board here nitrogen generation technology from South Tech and we're able to demonstrate you know those two gases I said primarily we're going to operate with the air from this device but we do have nitrogen installed here this compressor uh, cabinet is able to compress air and by filtering it through a membrane in the back here we're able to strip out the oxygen and then store nitrogen in a tank such as this and then supply it to our sprinkler systems um, so this is something that uh, let's say in the last 10 years has been gaining in popularity for use in sprinkler systems uh, but still air is you know, pretty much paramount that's what everybody uses every day air compressors are cheap that's the minimum that the code is going to require so the one thing that is pretty unique about the trailer is that we try and focus on educating people um, first of all it's nice that we can transport it to them so they don't have to worry about travel and accommodations to make that happen but the next step is we try and really focus on education. So that's why things look almost correct, but maybe a little bit off. So we have some piping that we color code to tell people what's going on. We have the yellow piping indicating that there is compressed air in the pipe. And the blue pipe is our pressurized water. We chose to outfit our valves with these clear face plates to let people visually see what happens on the inside of the valves. And we did also incorporate some lights to let people know when our switches are in active state. Um, just really all these things are to try and culminate on making this more of an educational experience and, and help people make those connections with the product and how they operate. We'd like to thank Long Island Pipe Supply and Brian Coyle for inviting us to their facility in Green Island, New York. This was our first time in their new 150 square foot supply and manufacture facility, and it was impressive. At this facility, they manufacture nipples, piping, and the Gemlock grooved product line. We are thrilled to have a company like Long Island Pipe Supply so close by. For more information about Long Island Pipe Supply, check out their website at lipipe.com. And for more information about Reliable, check out their website at reliablesprinkler.com.